Good morning, folks. Let's run down the space weather situation. September 9th, an M4.5 solar flare erupted and sent a CME our way. It impacted late on September 11th and caused a low-level geomagnetic storm. On September 10th, an X-class solar flare erupted from the same sunspot group and was even more Earth-directed than the M flare. The CME from that blast was fast on the heels of the first shockwave, and it impacted yesterday. While a far cry from anything that would cause global chaos, this was one of the fastest shock waves to impact Earth in months, if not years, and plasma temperatures in the CME reached 100,000 Kelvin. A G3 storm, a strong magnetic disruption, was produced. It's the strongest of 2014 so far. We may see some reverberations from this event today, but the main event is over. Some good news, our shield did its job and kept major plasma penetrations out of the mix, and also after briefly ramping the radiation storm at Earth's polar regions to level 2, it has dropped off, and we are out of storm conditions going from this last night to the better picture this morning. Solar flaring is calmed considerably as we approach a short-term trough in sunspot numbers soon. Big ones are exiting while we've got a new grouping down south that appears wanting to magnetically mix already. We'll watch as it matures. Incomers up north appear weak. Now, Despite the lack of flaring, we did have a couple filaments release yesterday. This one, the biggest and most central, was still only moderate in size and much of it goes north. Won't be anything to fear. That sunspot trough in the geomagnetic storm energy will be minor additions to a coming earthquake watch. We've had only one 6 magnitude earthquake in the last week, slightly below average, but we indeed expect that to ramp up as those aforementioned minor watch factors will be joined by the primary factor of our earthquake index coronal holes. The southern negative opening has been blocked by umbral fields despite the coronal field opening, but incoming at the trailing edge of the opening is a stronger extension that will face Earth in just a few days. Earthquake Index tells us that the coming days will be more active than the last few. Couple news notes. For enthusiasts of the new electric universe theories, a window into the lithium problem using Messier 54. I bet you stumble onto their flaws within two paragraphs of reading the article. Yesterday, we eyed the severe weather potential at New Zealand and it appears a rough go indeed down there. Unfortunately, not much has changed today and it appears more is due for this area and for a small convergence in northeastern Australia. We've got yet another volcano on alert in Indonesia as of this morning. We're also looking at even more flooding in the already ravaged areas near the Pakistan-India border. Homes, crops, lives completely destroyed. On the other side of the world, the fire and drought continues to plague the United States and portions of Canada. This scene is from Orange County via weather.com. Let's go to the tropics. Our West Pacific storm is about over top the Philippines now, slated to take a run at Hong Kong. It is indeed expected that the Eastern Pacific systems will merge or that a cannibalization event will occur and the remains will wander up the coastline. We've got four areas to watch on the other side of the continent. Each is struggling to gain energy and moisture for their run. As of now, the most significant aspect is that the Gulf warnings and the Pacific storms too actually are all sending their moisture to the U.S. convergence line. Flash flooding is not going to stop while the tropics feed this wind flow here. Europe, those same two lows, same two storm watches, Spain and Portugal under the gun of the Atlantic low, while the southeastern nations must be sick of this day after day as well. If you are new here, every day we post the links and citations to everything we say and show below the video in two different places. We've also got links to our two websites. The first is observatoryproject.com where you can find out when we'll be in your area. We're just outside Portland, Oregon tonight, and if you want to come see us, head over to the website for details. Also, you'll find a link to suspiciousobservers.org, where this afternoon we'll upload a new Fly on the Wall episode discussing the current solar storms, long-term cycles of the cosmos, and other topics. If you're not a member, it has been described as insanely cheap. Three bucks a month or only $20 for the entire year. We've got shots of our star to close at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, 3.35 a.m. here in Oregon. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.